uh, we're here today to talk about the Paradigm B2B uh, Combine report for enterprise companies. And, you know, at a high level, can you tell us a little bit more about the way the report is prepared? Yeah, I'd love to. So I spent seven years at Forrester, and in that time, I was the author of several Forrester Waves, which are quite well known in the industry. And of course, we competed with Gartner's Magic Quadrant and the IDC Market Scope, Market Scape. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one it is. Um, and, and those are fine pieces of research. And again, I used to produce that myself. But when I had the opportunity to create my own version of this research, I realized something, which is most of the other research reports are focused on um, identifying the differences between vendors, which is great, but it's more written for, no offense, vendors. I wanted to write a piece of research that was written for practitioners. And so I focus instead of on the feature and functionality um, equivalencies or differences, I, I do talk about those in my report. I focus more on what's the benefit of the features and the functions and the go-to-market strategy. So who's this report for? Who's the target audience? Right, so I think the the report is really focused on, I would call them the discerning buyer in B2B e-commerce. And what I mean by that is, it's somebody who is interested in the features and functions and product capabilities, which is 50% of the score that you'll get in my report, but the other 50% is really about the strategy of the company. What's the go-to-market approach? You know, what about their ability to execute? Do they have a, a strong management team that has not only you know, the ability to manage any software company, but do they also have the ability to understand what to do in the domain of B2B e-commerce? I know that practitioners have day jobs. You know, when they get up in the morning, they don't think about what are the feature and function comparisons and what kind of delivery of value is this particular vendor offering versus another one who, by the way, just got funding two months ago and hired a whole team, which I haven't met yet, nor will I have time to evaluate. I do. Mm -hmm. And so that's the work that I do. So a decision of this magnitude with the kind of uh, visibility that it has, because B2B commerce is always a very visible uh, project, you know, it's sage to triangulate information from multiple sources and then make your decision from there. And speaking of which, you know, what would you suggest is an effective way for people to try to prioritize those requirements that they may have? You know, so often in, in the world of software intersecting with business, it's everything is a priority, one A must have, but in the real world, it can't be that way. So how do people manage that? To me, it all begins with the experience. What is the experience that you want to create? And not in the present, but in the two to three year near-term future. And the reason I say that is because, you know, the classic overused analogy of skating where the hockey puck is, or sending the puck to where the player is going to be, you know, there's also the case in, for football fans out there uh, that, you know, the quarterback doesn't throw to where the right receiver is standing. He throws to where the right receiver is going to be to catch the ball to score a touchdown. You've got a lead here. And, and what complicates it even more is that your priorities really need to be about what is going to take place two to three years in the future because that's what you're building for. You're not building for the present because the time, by the time you finish, the present's in the past. So you really need to think about what is it we're going to deliver as a differentiated, sustainable value proposition two to three years into the future and then work your way backwards to figure out what platforms and partners are a best fit. And to go back to my research, you know, sometimes these are not easy things to compare feature to feature, function to function. That's why I spend a lot of time when I talk to the vendors about understanding things like, what is this management team really doing? People don't want everything. First of all, they can't afford everything and they can't implement everything. So they want to decide what are the three, four, five things that I absolutely need, the must-haves versus the nice-to-haves versus, frankly, the stuff I don't need at all. One of the things I have said to many people over the, my last years in e-commerce is, pardon the, the pun, but think of your own paradigm. Are you an engineering-oriented company? Then you may go want to go buy a tool set that would allow you to build great things. Or are you more focused on outsourcing what you're not good at and focusing on your core business, in which case you might want to look at something that's closer to an all-in-one. 
it's it's about where you're coming from that matters. And so that's why I think some of the reports that are out there are just too presumptuous. When I started this thing out, there were some questions about it. People were like, where's your two by two? Who's the winner? And I said, there is no winner because everybody's going to have their own winner. That's the point of this. We're not identifying some super ordinate, you know, winner and, uh, hey, everybody else, these guys are great and everybody else is terrible. Well, the guys that are great for one company are not necessarily great for another company. So that's why I hope I do with my report is really, uh, you know, target this at somebody's individual needs. And, 